The latest Fox News poll shows some negatives for Hillary Clinton. When asked if she is lying about her email, 60% said yes. Only 27% said no. But still, listen to what Mark Cuban told us about who will win. Roll tape. Who wins this thing? It's been a fascinating process, whatever. But who do you think? Right now, with the way things are, if I had to bet, I think it's a landslide for Hillary. Really? No question about it. But because I think the Bernie supporters will come along, you know, as much as they might, you know, cascade Hillary right now, mm -hmm. they're not going to vote for Donald Trump. Well, nationally syndicated talk show host and Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall is with us. Quite happy with what Mark Cuban's uh, opinion is, um, even though voters, as we know from the polls, do not trust her. Uh, welcome, Leslie. Interesting to chat with Mark Cuban. Yes. Um, said he'd be VP for either Hillary or Donald Trump. Equal opportunity for himself. Uh, apparently so, <laughs> yeah, playing both sides, literally. Um, look, the polls... Interesting. I want to bring up the, 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 the poll among women. 50% for Hillary, 32% for Trump. I'm frankly surprised it's that close. Is that worrying for Hillary Clinton? No, not right now. I mean, you have to remember, first of all... Why isn't she appealing to more? I think that she will. But the one thing I have to say, and ladies are in the house, women mm -hmm. are sometimes women's worst obstacle. Really? I mean, yeah. I, Why? It, women are women's worst, worst obstacle. Uh -huh. Ladies, right? Yeah. I, I, you know, if women I get off be, the air today and yeah. people tell me you look fat or whatever, it's women saying it. What? Yeah. It's not the men saying it. It's a women saying So I'm not surprised <laughs> about that, one. Um, and, I th and I think that women, like some men, feel threatened by women like Hillary, who are very strong, they're very aggressive, they have been and want to be in even more powerful positions. And believe it or not, I have spoken to some women who don't feel that women should be president or that women should be in positions of power. Or is it more, Leslie, that people don't trust her, her track record, the email scandal, they don't have faith in her that she's telling the truth? I don't think that would go along lines of gender. Yeah, there are definitely people who don't trust mm -hmm. her. I have friends last night I was having cocktails with who felt that way. Uh, but they will still vote for her. I think regarding the women, right now you still have Senator Sanders in play in the minds of Sanders supporters who were in that revolution until yeah. the end July. Uh, even though you have four out of five Sanders supporters say that they'll support, he has a lot of those females, you know, that are supporting him. And I think they're going to come around and you'll see those numbers change with Hillary. And I think also if Donald Trump continues to say things as he has said in the past about women, I think that you'll see a wider gap in those numbers between the two candidates. So we finally got the president endorsing Hillary yes. uh, yesterday, and he'll get out on the, the, the campaign trail with her next week starting in Wisconsin. Um, he's no doubt a gifted speaker. Does he help her or not? Because his popularity rating much higher than hers, it appears. Well, her husband, former President Bill Clinton's popularity is higher than all of theirs, and he's been out on the campaign trail, and he has in the past, like in 2008, and she is not and has not been our president. I don't put as much stock uh, when people say, oh, this one's endorsed, or this organization, yeah. this person has endorsed. So with all due respect to my president, who I voted for both cycles, um, I, I think it's great, but I think that the people who supported him pretty much already support her, and if they don't, they support Bernie, and then they will support her. Well, let me ask you this. It was interesting that uh, uh, the president met with Loretta Lynch yesterday. Yes. The optics of that are not good because Hillary is under federal investigation. Here we have the president just endorsing her and then meeting with the uh, attorney general. Um, I don't think the optics on that are very good. What are your thoughts? Well, I think if you look, you know, you can look at it a couple of ways. One, he's the president of the United States and she's the attorney general. They really should be having meetings. Um, but he's he just... met, either way, if he had met with her before, what, well, you know, what is the time frame that's, that's okay? I, I think for any sitting president... Not hours a after he just or, endorsed Hillary. Right, but I, who was, is he going to endorse Donald Trump? I was having this conversation with somebody else on air the other day and I said, mm -hmm. do you seriously think that any Democrat's going to stand up and endorse the presumptive Republican nominee or vice versa? It isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. Anybody in their party is going to endorse the presumptive nominee for their party. That's politics. What about Elizabeth Warren? Very quickly, I wanted to ask you about her. Um, very powerful, great mm -hmm. speaker, can be the attack dog, if you like, for the Clinton campaign. But is she vice president material? What would a two women on the ticket look like? Because of what I said earlier about uh -huh. women, <laughs> okay. I would not, if I were running and if I were advising uh, Secretary Clinton, put two women on the ticket. You want somebody who's different than you, who's going to not just uh, compliment you as a teammate, 
but maybe gather some votes for people that may not like you, but like the uh, the other individual. She could also upstage Hillary, which would not. No, be good. I don't think she could upstage. Yeah. Her. She's great. She's a great woman. I love yeah. I love her, but I don't think putting two women on the ticket. Leslie, is, you made a great point good. though. Eight years ago, that was Hillary's problem was Democratic women. Yeah, so you make a, that's a solid point. Very good. Let's on campus liberal lunacy for you. I like to call it liberal lunacy. This one from the University of Oklahoma, where the school has introduced a 24-7 bilingual micro, yes, I did that, microaggression <laughs> hotline. Uh, Cheryl, explain what's going on. Well, so people want me to explain microaggression because no, I'm really hotline, not sure I why? can, but no, I know I'm Well, kidding. that's a good point. I'm kidding. What is microaggression? microaggression? What is that? <laughs> okay, so here's what they say. It's 24-7 hotline. It's costing 15000 a year to staff. Yes. Discrimination, bullying, harassment, or misconduct. If you're a student at the University of Oklahoma, you find yourself in these situations, you can call, file a report. Here's what's interesting, though, yeah. is that this is the same college, University of Oklahoma, that two years ago, that viral video from SAE, the yes. fraternity, that was that racist chant, it was very bad. I just think the timing is interesting. Is this for the students or is the university trying to kind of cover its you-know-what? Let me bring in, that's a good point, uh, Leslie Marshall, uh, you laughed when we talked about this, uh, only because you're saying, well, that's one way to prevent a lawsuit. Yeah. Is there a little bit of that in there that providing this perhaps deflects what could be legal action? I don't. I, I would hope that's not their reason. Although every university is a business, uh, but I would also hope that it helps them to track um, what are we getting the most complaints on. Um, but who, who, is being, who, is being, who is being taunted? But I think there are other reasons for this. For example, if you're my professor yeah. and you're bullying me, who do I go to? Mm -hmm. And they don't want everybody going to campus police. They can't do that. So they have somewhere where people can call. They can make the reports. They can document these. They can track them. And maybe they can prevent something well, that could be violent Are in the you future. encouraging people to make complaints that have no place for something like this? No, I think you're giving people a, a place to go. I know different, but I mean, we have hotlines for suicide. I think it gives people, and, and some may say a false sense, but a sense of uh, better security and that the uh, officials at the university are listening to them and that they care because they have that well, incidence. When they parents. get out of school, there is no hotline for microaggressions. That's the only thing. <laughs> All right, Leslie, thank you very much.